I, I see that you passed another aspect of the replay rule, this one involving the clock. Could you explain that? Yeah, so the, the rule that passed today would, would allow us to review the game clock just at the end of the half, so the end of the second quarter or the end of the fourth quarter, where the clock should have stopped and it was allowed to expire. So if the ball hit the ground with <clears throat> two or more seconds on the clock and, the, and we allow the clock to expire, then that could be reviewed. We could put time back on the clock and allow that team to get another snap uh, that they were denied because of a timing error. Two-prong question for me, uh, I guess as best as you can to define what a catch is now, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. with the tweaks, would Des Bryant's play become a catch? Yeah, great question. So with the tweaks, it really didn't change the rule. It was just clarifying the language in in the idea of making it clearer and, and easier to understand. So Des Bryant would still be an incomplete pass. And I think it's just the explaining the definition of of what a catch is, control two feet, and the previous definition was having the ball long enough to perform an act common to the game, being able to pitch it, pass it, and I think that's where the, the Des play, there was some confusion because people got stuck on that on that football act aspect of it, and the rule now says that you have to have control both feet down, and then after that, have the ball long enough to clearly establish yourself as a runner, so this is directly in line with our defenseless player rule. So a receiver attempting to catch a pass, he's protected until he clearly becomes a runner. He has the ability to protect himself, ward off, or avoid the contact. So we feel that that makes it clearer and that, that if, the, if the player hasn't established himself as a runner, so he doesn't have control two feet and the ability to do, uh, protect himself, and he's falling or going to the ground prior to that, then he has to hold on to the ball until after he, he contacts the ground, which is, which is what made the Des Bryant play an incomplete pass. He didn't maintain control until after that initial contact uh, with the ground. Now, Dean, obviously you know that the Des Bryant catch was argued on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, Some people thought it was a catch, some people weren't. Was there any thought about not just tightening the language but actually changing the rule that a catch like that would have been a catch? Yeah, absolutely. There was a lot of discussion, and the competition committee took this very seriously and looked at a lot of, a lot of tape and a lot of different plays, and, and I think... The rule the way it is, it, it allows for greater consistency uh, in, in officiating, on-field officiating, and in replay, and that if you are falling to the ground, you are going to the ground, you have to maintain that control. And to, to change the rule for this one play would really create more gray area, and you'd, you'd have to determine, okay, well, did he... How many feet did, did how many steps were down? Did he have it long enough um, before the ball touched the ground? So I think the rule, the way it is, it's it's clear. It allows for consistent officiating, and uh, and the committee just wanted to clarify some of the language in the in the hopes of making it easier to understand. I just wonder, Dean, that take the the verbiage out of it because sometimes you know clarification makes things even cloudier for some reason sure. if you're watching that game and you aren't the vice president of what you are at the NFL and you're watching that game at home would you say that was a catch well it's a you know that that's part of the issue is that is that you have a lot of people that look at that play and and, and say that's a catch and i understand that 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 eye test and obviously right. I, I you know i've been i've studied this i've been involved you know for for a long time and we've and been a part of writing these rules and so I think, you know, that's part of the issue, and that's why we took it so seriously, is that we have a play where so many people think it's a catch. Um, um, do we need to change it? And ultimately, the committee felt that, that by changing it, we would, we would create a, a, a more subje- a more, another subjective layer to it, and it would create more inconsistency. But, but that's a, you know, I understand that point and how so many people thought it was a catch, and that's why the committee looked at it similar to what they did after the Calvin Johnson play in, in 2010. Talking to Dean Blandino, NFL Vice President of Officiating here on the Michael K. Show. Uh, what direction are we going right now, Dean, with the extra point? Yeah, so there is there is one proposal on the table that has not been that has not been voted on yet, and that would be the proposal to move the extra point to the 15 yard line, so make it a 33 yard kick. I think there's a lot of different ideas and a, and a lot of um, options out there. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. Uh, if that will pass or not, I think you, you do have a lot of people, and there is some growing sentiment to change that play because of the accuracy percentage. It's a 99.5.4.3 percent play the last couple of years, and I think there are a lot of people that think we need to make that a more competitive play. 
And so we did experiment with it in the preseason from the 15-yard line, and that did drop the accuracy closer to 93%. And so, uh, you know, we'll wait to see what the, what the vote will be um, tomorrow. But I, I don't think regardless – of what what happens with the vote, I don't think we're done looking at the extra point and and, and looking at different ways uh, to maybe change it. I've read different things, Dean, about maybe squeezing the goalposts together. Any thought of that? Yeah, that was something. You know, we we experiment experimented with that during the Pro Bowl, and we moved them in two feet on either side, so it was a fourteen yard, uh, fourteen foot distance between the two uprights, and that obviously. You wouldn't only be affecting the extra point, but you'd be affecting the field goal as well if you did that. Right. So there, there's some concern there, and uh, I think we, we'd have to look at that's that's probably more of a long-term um, goal if in terms of looking at the PAT and the field goal and, and look, continuing to look at those accuracy percentages. But right now I think the focus tomorrow will be on the extra point and, and do we move it back to uh, to the 15-yard line. I've got I've got the perfect solution for you, though, Dean. What's that? Have goalposts that widen and close. I mean, it shouldn't be that difficult to make. Yeah. So when it's a field goal, it goes back to where it is right now. Yeah, that's certainly an option. I think there's there's things that we've looked at and and the, the companies that make the goalposts and the engineering involved. And uh, that's certainly possible. It's just something we have to continue to research and, 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 uh, and develop. And I guess this becomes less of an issue if they do move it back, Dean, but I always wondered why you could not make the goalposts higher or a laser system to make it go up to infinity because we've seen plenty of kicks go over uh, the goalpost where you'd have to review to see if it actually would have been good if the yeah. posts were expanded. Absolutely. And, and with, with technology, there's so many advance, advancements and in, in where technology is today. So all of that is what wasn't feasible 10 years ago is, is, re, is, a real, is a real possibility today. And, and so I think we have to continue to look at it and think you, the similar to what tends to happen with rule changes like this or potential rule changes is that you study it, you continue to look at it. You know, I remember when before the two-point try and, and there were some people in the league that said we would never have the two-point try in the NFL. That's a college rule. Well, it seems like we've had it, we've had it forever. So I think that's just part of the process of looking at this play. And, and I, I still think it will change at some point. I, I just don't know if that's going to be tomorrow or if that's going to be something different down the line. Our guest, Dean von Blandino, the vice president of officiating for the NFL. Any other attempted tweaks at the replay system that was shot down, Dean? Yeah, so today the there were several proposals from clubs, and, and they ranged from um, reviewing everything, so reviewing any officiating decision to uh, narrowing it down to reviewing hits on defenseless players or personal fouls. And, uh, and those were all rejected today. There, there's not enough... Um, sentiment to, to go down that path right now. I think there I think there's some merits to that and, and, and the ability to look at something again and, and, and the opportunity to get it right. But I think we really have to look through and think through all the ramifications that that would have, um, how that would affect on-field officiating, the standard that's being used on the field in real time versus the standard in replay where you're able to slow things down. Does that, does that create a different standard in making these decisions? So I think that's something it got. Those, those proposals were rejected today, but I don't think that, that they're going to go away, and I think we're going to have to continue to discuss them. Dean, last couple of years, there was some talk about maybe eliminating the kickoff, a high collision sort of play. Has that been tabled for a while? Yeah, that that hasn't really been on the agenda this year because the the uh, the injury data that we have is really showing that, that the injuries on kickoffs have, have um, come down, and so I think the committee is, is happy where we are right now, but we certainly have to continue to look at it. And with the move from uh, the 30 to the 35, and we have more touchbacks, and so we have less kick returns, so that's an obvious you know, reason why we, we have less injuries. But uh, I think, I think it, it's been tabled for now, but it's, it's something player safety is something that's always going to be the top priority, and so we have to continue to, to, to look at it and, and monitor those injuries on those plays.